Okay. Um, let's start then. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to welcome you to our Bavarian restaurant. I know you've all been eagerly waiting for the talk, but it will be 50 minutes late. So um, instead, I'll ask you what we'll order today, because I'm obviously expecting you all to come to um, the opening of my restaurant. And um, I call it the Munich iPad. Obviously, um, this um, was a chef of the restaurant speaking. So we got three persons in this talk. First of all, two developers that have developed um, the nice iPad app we'll be showing today and show you how we created it. And we got the chef who's asking questions, um, who's um, showing you kind of how this restaurant was working. So. And a mobile developer who's building a mobile website and iPad application. Yeah. And um, first of all, let me introduce Vadim Migorod, who is the main speaker here on this track. And, and he's Fabian well Franz, who is also a really cool chief. <laughs> <laughs> chef. So, um, let's start. So I've heard that um, this mobile thing that's just kind of cool. <laughs> and I really want to know, uh, why do I need to go mobile? What's so, that getting me? Yeah, there is a plenty of reasons why you can do it. Uh, first of all, you get a better user experience. Uh, your site users will like it very much, and that is why you get new visitors, and you will also compete with other websites. And one of the major reasons you really should to do it is that about 50% of traffic is going to be mobile by the 2016. And it is really amazing. Wow, 50% of traffic. I think I'll buy a new restaurant. And um, I have to calculate for a moment. So um, I'm sold on that idea, but um, how could my, my site be mobile? I mean, I have a site. It's a great website, Drupal 7, obviously. What else? Um, how could it be mobile? Well, uh, first of all, it should look like a native iOS Android application. And it also should to be optimized for mobile devices. And it need to go to the App Store. OK. Um, this App Store thing, it, it sounds really nice. I mean, I, I, I would love to have it. I would love to have this, this Drupal website in this phone. But as I imagine, kind of a Drupal website is kind of big. How does it fit in such a small phone? And uh, that sounds rather really complicated. How much does it cost? Um, I can spend some. I have some budget. But um, there are limits. Well, it's actually, it is not difficult to do it. Uh, it is actually very easy if you use Drupal, PhoneGap, and the Mag module. Yeah. Let me give you a little retrospective, because oh. this session is kind of a follow-up session to a session we had in Denver. In Denver, we first introduced the mobile app uh, generator, which is the acronym the Mag is standing for. In Denver, there were two things that people were really asking for. The mobile app generator, as well later show, allows you to easily take a Drupal website and you'll click a button and do some other things and it's a mobile app. Um, but one thing, two things were kind of the most often asked questions and that was, the first thing was, well, it's still looking like a Drupal website. It's not an app. So how can we design things? How can we theme things? How can we make things happen? that this mobile website is now more looking like an app. That's kind of what we'll show in the first part. And then we'll um, go more into the, um, into the mobile app generator part, um, where we'll show um, some very cool thing, because the other thing that people asked was, 
well, I can generate my app now. I can have an app. I can update it to the App Store, but that's too slow. What really most people wanted is in-app updates, and we got that. And that's what we'll also show later. So, um, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> but um, how could I make Drupal look like a native iOS or Android app? Do you mean like this? Wow. Uh, wait a moment. Let, let me let me see. So so I got my Kaiser Schmarrn, my Apple Strudel, my Rostbart Würste, and um, here are also some vegetarian options, Bavarian snacks. You, what do you think? I think this could work. So. Really, I tried this Mac generator thing there in Denver, um, but what was not so good happening was um, that I had some text and I couldn't scroll. I tried with one finger, with two fingers, with three fingers, even with five fingers. It just didn't work. So how can I make this I scroll for bars? Yeah, like this one. So, uh, yep, that looks about right. I like this. You like this too? Great. So, uh, I have used iScroll library written by Matteo Spinelli. Uh, you could download it on the website kubic.org slash uh, iScroll. Uh, it is a very nice uh, library. And uh, here's what you need to do. Uh, you, need to do uh, you need to add a couple of divs. The first div is a wrapper. Uh, that determines the size of the uh, scroller. And the second is the um, scroller content area, which uh, contains some content, some UL, uh, text, and whenever. And also, uh, you need to add some C simple CSS um, for the wrapper, uh, where position relative is actually uh, some uh, CSS tweak. And uh, that index is um, like making it to be on the lower um, compared to other objects. And you also may set a width, but it's actually optional parameter and the height. And you uh, can set outer flow, which could be auto or uh, scroll. And actually, you could skip this parameter and it will, it will work well. And if you want like to make um, uh, experimenting with a uh, horizontal or vertical scroll bars, you could uh, use overflow dash x and overflow uh, dash y. And what else you need to do is to, um, in the uh, JavaScript file, you need to uh, add a new behavior and attach a function that will find all unprocessed uh, scroll divs and will uh, initialize, create new scroll object, and we'll store it in the data. So uh, it's used uh, because um, if you uh, using some kind of um, jQuery to show in high elements, um, I scroll works only for the objects that are shown on the page. So every time you are uh, showing or changing a DOM, um, you need to uh, trigger a uh, Drupal behavior to enable and refresh all existing uh, iScroll objects there. Yeah, just to explain this a little more, um, now in my role as developer of that, um, we first had a little different approach, but um, it turned out to be not as well. So um, really the thing is, um, this is a Drupal way to do things. Um, you're really using the usual Drupal behaviors, and then we are just storing the data here in the, in the object where we added the I scroll on. And the reason is that whenever you are now showing something, you just select Drupal attached behaviors. And then um, this gets called again. So we didn't show this kind of for complexity, but the only thing you need to do is you have to kind of add the same code like for I scroll process dot each you are just doing this dot data i scroll dot refresh, and that's all you need to do. And then you have it working nicely with within the Drupal framework. It will also work for 
Ajax Alaband, really nice. So this was good with the spoil bars. Yeah. Um, I really like this carousel, um, but um, how can I create it? And can I just add new slides whenever I need? Yeah, actually you can add new slides. The slides is a note and this is a view. And it supports a touch input from your des um, mobile device from the iPad. Like this. And to do it, uh, you need uh, to use roundabout jQuery plugin by Fred LeBlanc and use roundabout module by Felix Meyer. Felix Meyer. And um, to make it happen, you need to install use roundabout jQuery update modules and roundabout plugin. Also, you uh, may need to install event drug and event drop plugin that you could download from tree.media.com. It is uh, needed for uh, uh, touch support. And uh, you may also want to create a view page and a view block and set roundabout format for it and enable dragon in the settings for. So, that is. So, this is all nice and good, but um, I think when the app starts, I would like to introduce the user to the app, and I would like to also have like a little info where user can touch, and then um, he can see um, some information about this app, so to understand it better. Yeah, here is an example of the pop-up of the model dialog. And there is um, plenty of models on the Drupal.org and lots of uh, and JavaScript plugins that allows to do dialog. But uh, it's actually they are not very convenient to use from the JavaScript. Uh, you could do it. They are perfectly integrated with some other Drupal models. But what I found is was simple model. Uh, it's jQuery plugin uh, written by Eric Martin. And it's actually not a Drupal model yet, but it is very easy to use. So you need to do like this. Um, select um, a proper element that you want to show as a content in the dialog uh, using jQuery and run model uh, method. And also you may want to use your own HTML to be shown there. And if you want to add some uh, animations like fade in and fend out. What you need to do is run uh, this with special parameter on open, which actually contains a function uh, which will um, fade in the overlay and um, fade in the um, container and then uh, show the data. Oh, you could use this snippet. I like this um, simple model very much and it has very nice features like uh, you could um, manually, automatically resize and position your dialog. Uh, it supports model and no model uh, modes. You can control overlay opacity and uh, use show and hide animations. It's very cool. I hope it will be um, integrated with some Drupal model like a dialog API or something like this. You should try it. So, um, so far we got the carousel, we got the nice scroll bars, I got some PDFs where people can download uh, my menu, they can look at it, and it's all Drupal views. I like that, it's very extendable, but I really need a detail page so that I can, can just um, select something from the menu at the top, and then I want to show the history, you know, in my restaurant we are only having meals that are certified by Wikipedia like this. Here's nice transitions. Between the mails. Yeah. So. 
That looks good. Cool. So um, doing something like this, like a little um, scrolling, etc., cetera, is, is very easy. Um, there's two plugins to use for that. There's a local scroll and the scroll tool plugin. Um, and it's very easy usable. You just have a normal container, like you have as a scroll bar. And um, then you have just the usual H name, angels, or for the diffs, you have angels. You can just uh, use the href, and it will automatically scroll there. Scroll tool is very, very powerful because you can even have a grid and you can scroll within that grid wherever you want. Um, and it was all working really nice. Yeah, it was working really nice until but I saw when there was a lots of slides and it started to work extremely slow on the iPad. What was happening? Is there any yeah. way to make some hardware acceleration? Yeah, what was happening was it was working on the iPad then and we were just looking at it and it was sluggish. It didn't look nice. Also the carousel after some were trying and some were ending was also sluggish. And the reason is that all of this was using um, the usual jQuery animations. And um, we really saw it and initial tests had shown that it should have worked, um, that um, the iPad was powerful enough just to calculate the animations, but it turned out it is not. Um, so we had a little problem because the client was um, our client, here's a chef, is now really worried, well, what about my budget? Do I have to redo all of these animations again? Do we have to create a new roundabout plugin with CSS3 animations? And fortunately, it turned out, no. There's a very, 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 and I could add hundreds of varies more, a cool library which is called jQuery Transit. Who knows it? One or two. Okay. Um, this library allows you to use your normal animate functionality that you are used to from jQuery animations, and it will automatically translate those into CSS Suite properties. That means with just very, very little code change, usually it's just to exchange animate through transition, you'll be able to write CSS3 animated things. And that's really cool because um, CSS3 animations are nice, and, but I still found they're like a little difficult to use. And um, I'm so used to the jQuery animate way. And there are also lots of third party libraries kind of depending on this. And it turned out that you can really just, just exchange things easily. So how we did solve it for the, um, um, for the scrolling of the menu, and the reason why it was slow was the big background images. Because the more bigger the background images got, the slower it got. And also what was happening is um, from the background images, we once had position fixed instead of scroll. <laughs> you can't believe how slow it got. And when we got back to position scroll, it worked better. And then we had scaled the background image because CSS allows you to do that also. Yeah, and Much also slower than when we just did an image cache and used the right And uh, also thing. transparency was changed there. So while well, there was a semi-transparent uh, slides that was turning and the opacity was changing and the transition really helped us to uh, make it work very fast. Yeah, the transparency was also a problem. So um, what, it's very easy to use, as I said. So what we are just doing, we are calculating the new X offset. And what jQuery Transit allows us, it gives a new property to CSS. So instead of changing the left property, you're changing a new X property. And this X property directly maps to the transition property, uh, translation property, of the CSS3. And that way it's very, very easy. And we now had two cases. No, no, go back. <laughs> we now had two cases, one animated case and one non-animated case. And it turned out that you can just use the same code because if it were always animating, what would happen is people would click on it from the main screen 
and then um, it would just call there, and people were like confused what is happening there. Continue. You can vary ahead. So um, you might ask yourself, kind of because we promised us a session description or because you're curious, uh, what additional modules can be used for going mobile? What other things can you use to make your mobile experience more rewarding or to have a mobile site at all? So there is a two big categories of the models. One uh, you need for the mobile website, while other you need for the mobile app. Let's consider the mobile website models first. So um, there is a mobile tools module, which actually um, has a lots of functions. It allows to detect uh, the user device using browser cap and provide contextual switching of the content and layout. It could also do automatic redirection to the site based on a specific device group, like uh, if you have a um, mobile, a smartphone, you're redirected on the one side. If you have a tablet, you're redirected on another side. And if you use just PC, you are using the main site. And this model also supports the spaces and the features. And there is a mobile bookmark pop-up and much more. But it's pretty complicated. And um, Aquia Insights show that it's not better to use this model if you uh, saw the Aquia DevCloud demo. There was like a, if this model is installed, it like, gives you minus 10 scores or something, something like this because it's a problem of the caching. And uh, so you could use simple alternatives like a mobile sim a switch sim and mobile switch, with, which do actually the same uh, with addition of the uh, use of simple mobile redirect module. So uh, the problem of caching was if you're having a single uh, website with the same URL for different devices and you have lots of visitors, you may want to um, cache the content but actually you could not do it because for the different group of device, you probably have a different content, a, different, a, a bit different blocks, a bit different CSS and some other kind of stuff. So what you need to do is to detect device and redirect it to a specific website that has a specific caching configuration for this um, group of devices. And this is possible to do with it, with these models. Um, but still, you might have a need, for example, um, that you have a site and it has now a, a mobile context and um, you've set up everything correctly that um, you're showing kind of um, some things on the one device, the other thing on the other, and you're having a redirect to your mobile website. Um, there, no, no, next one, next slide. I'm talking about mobile Context, context, mobile detect. Yeah, um, so I do. Um, you want to? Okay. So, um, what was happening was um, that um, there was a big transition day, and people were like coming to the site, and they were just totally confused because they were used to the normal site; it was working on the mobile device, and now they got redirected to another site, and it was looking completely different. So. Um, what um, the client at that time wanted to do was to just show a little message box. And for this, we got this um, little uh, mo uh, project, Context Mobile Detect, written by uh, Adam here in the front. And um, this allows to do that. But um, Context Mobile Detect is depending on something else that's quite cool. And that's also why BrowseCap is not a good solution in that. Um, where you really want to do the mobile detection is in your first peer of caching. And that for most high performance sites would be Varnish. So there's um, a possibility to um, set up some device detect, .vcl it's called. Um, you can easily Google it. And then it will just give uh, three um, options to the uh, Drupal site. And this will be PC, tablet, or mobile. And based on this, you can show different blocks. So, and this is because it's kind of working with Invarnish, completely compatible with the other approach, and then you can also do some redirections there, et cetera. So it's highly recommended for this combination. You uh, can also use the browser cap block and the browser cap C tools 
uh, browser cap block module uh, almost do the same for the, uh, it adds some settings configuration to the default blocks of Drupal uh, if you are not using context. And the browser cap C tools add some uh, conditions and context to the page manager module, which uh, could be used actually uh, in the panels and then creating your own pages to detect uh, device uh, based on specific group. And there is also some kind of useful models, like a laser loading module. So if you are viewing a big website on the uh, smartphone, you probably not often use Wi-Fi. You may use a 3G or maybe GPRS, or maybe even WER and some kind of edge technology. So you don't want to all site to load and all images to be loaded. So you could actually use image lazy loader module, which will show only the images for the specific area your site users are viewing. The same happens with the block lazy loader, which loads the block for this area um, that your visitor is viewing. Um, just to give you an idea of how this is working, let's say we got an image way down the fold. So this is a scroll bar. Here's a fold. This is our image. Um, if you're just looking at this, why should we load that image? There's no need to. So, but when the user scrolls down, 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 here we're coming near the image, so quickly we load it, and once the user comes, he sees it. So there's no problem with the user experience usually, and users really appreciate it, because if you don't have to load like 10 images, um, it will be, of course, much faster, and that gives you a better user experience. Oh, that's nice. And the mobile app, there are several models that you could use for the mobile application. Uh, one of them is a smart app banners that is used for your mobile website if you are viewing uh, your website from the mobile device. So you may want to view on the Android or iOS, use your native application. So this model shows nice welcome uh, banner to install the, your iPad or Android application. It detects a user device based on the group, and it also detects if their uh, app is installed, and a future version of this could uh, maintain context and pass some parameters to the uh, mobile application. There is also a model of push notifications. Yeah, and push notification is, I think, really cool and something you need uh, in that um, we worked hard on push notification support for this app. It works. Um, um, the push notifications module allows you just to, to send push notifications directly to Apple, to Google for Android, etc. So you can send those, but you will still need something else just to receive the push notification for a server, but there are several server modules that can just help you there. But um, this makes it really easy to send out the push notifications. For um, this mobile app, we actually ended up using uh, Urban Airship, and that's probably also what the mobile app generator will support kind of out of the box. They have a free plan that's, I don't know, millions of messages, and that's probably sufficient enough, and um, it was easier to use in that context, but we evaluate push notifications was working great. Uh, I will add some uh, some description for the push notifications. So, uh, if you like using the client server technology, the only client could initiate connection. So, if you want to get update automatically from the server um, using the client server technology, you need to ping server and then get some results. But imagine if all your applications would do it in the same time, you probably get lots, lots of traffic, and this is not needed. The push notification allows server to ping the client. Well, yep. This is what we need to, yep. when we are want to say either that there is some new slides, some new items in the menu uh, you want to show, uh, you want to see it and update it. Yeah, and obviously um, what's also happening if the user is not actually using your app, you have no way of informing them, well, there's a new slide available, check out the new meal, uh, come to our restaurant, what about visiting today, Friday night, and we really want to do this for marketing purposes, so um, what you want to do is um, send those push notifications as kind of in-app updates and out, beside app updates, and if you own an iPhone or something, you'll surely know this little badge there 
which is just incrementing when new push notifications are received and that's and kind of what's working. Yeah, right. and now we come to it. Finally, we want to present you a special module from the Fabian. Okay. Are you prepared for it? <laughs> Welcome, mobile app generator module. And you might know it already because um, the Denver session is linked, but we will present you the new version of the mobile app generator. It has many, many new features, but for those that don't know it yet, you really have your Drupal site. You select some pages you want to export inside of a menu or there are so far also some patches for other approaches. You take this batch, put it for example in zip file, then you transfer it to your machine where you are developing for your iOS application or even you can use um, something else I come to later. <laughs> and then you put in the zip file and you create your mobile app with it. And that really makes it very, very easy for everyone to create a mobile app. It's um, not just that you need um, special knowledge or something, but you can do it. And really the new things are, we have this in-app synchronization support, we get uh, the support of pushing to an external server, we get um, the push notifications um, via human airship and uh, lots of other cool stuff. So um, it's really, really too easy to use. Another thing that was kind of a limitation still in Denver was you would need to switch your theme first. It's no longer necessary. You can just, just select your theme you want to export. So you can even have a mobile app on your main website and have some content so you don't have to create duplicate content. And this is how it works. Yeah. Here we have our usual mobile app you've seen already. We can go through some slides, etc. And then at the top there's the admin menu and probably too difficult to see but there's a mobile app generator and um, generate mobile app. And there are different settings uh, you can use. Um, first of all there's a setting for the pass and we are pushing this to S3 now. Um, then you can select um, which menu to export and what's new is there's a version number. So all what you are pushing is versioned. That means if user is at one version, they can still update to a new one, but there's no conflict. And if you now generate it, we're just pushing everything up to S3. And once you push a new version, the client will now, we'll see a little later, and um, can then download the update. That's trick that looks really cool. But what is it phone gap? And how it could be cooked so, so um, Android. Let me ask, um, who of you know PhoneGap or Cordova? Uh, some, but not all. So PhoneGap is something, or Cordova, what it's now called, is something that's um, making it possible to use kind of a web application that you're creating. And if you're creating this with a mobile app generator or via hand, it's not really uh, such important. Um, so I think the mobile app generator obviously is a little easier. Um, but what you can do is you can run this code native, for example, on an iPhone, on an Android, on a Windows mobile. And really what PhoneGap allows you is what you can't do if you're just running from a website is to access all of the device's native functionality. For example, you could check, and that's what we did for this app, if a video if the app is running in 3G, uh, so just having a slow network connection or if it's on the wireless or um, if it's having no network at all. And depending on that, you could, for example, show videos which are inside of the app and rather small. But if they are on a Wi-Fi, you don't want the small videos, but you rather want to have them a pop-up where they can see the videos from YouTube or some other service like Brightcove. And you can just embed the code. And again, it's just doable programming. So you all can do this. You all can do create mobile apps. And you do not even need to own all of those SDKs. Because um, there's a PhoneGap cloud or Cordova cloud, a PhoneGap build service. And um, there you can just um, upload a Git repository of your files 
and it will automatically kind of create your files there. So FilmGap Cloud is, to say this, commercial, but you get one app for free, and if you are not selling this, if, if your code is not proprietary, but you can kind of have it like a public repository, then you get more apps free. Yeah, it has support uh, with a Git. Yeah. This is kind of the device matrix of uh, PhoneGap, so it supports a lot of operating systems. It allows you to notification, vibration, storage. Storage is very needed for this module, so we can do the in-app updates. You can select the network, can do a photo with um, the camera and upload it as media, um, have a compass, and they really many and, functions. And probably the future version of it will uh, can do like a cooking, serving, and some other kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't want to go into too much detail now on um, PhoneGap because we have a limited space here. But um, I rather encourage you, if you have not yet done so, to check out the session from Denver. It's linked from the session description from here. And you'll have some fun. I assure you that. Um, and you'll learn everything about PhoneGap. Oh, cool. And how does it all can work together? So it all works together. That was kind of how it was working in, in Denver still. We have the mobile app generator, generate the app, put it on the phone, done. Yeah. So uh, but Next if I one. want to update, like, for example, if I want to update menu, what I need to do? Yeah, uh, what you would have needed to do is you would need to generate a new mobile app, put in the new folder, push the update via the Apple Store, and have users download it manually through the Apple Store. But, you know, if you just want to promote something that's, yeah, pushing a whole update just because you want to promote your party tonight is probably not what you want. Another possibility was, like, services, and you can do this. You can just... Um, set up your Drupal site to connect to a server. So certain things in your mobile app need always network connectivity that's working without problems. So you can really use all your skills you have in terms of services and mobile, etc. here. As long as it works in the browser, it will mostly work on the phone with some little exceptions. But still, that was not enough because they say, well, we really like it that you don't need a network, but we still want to push updates when users are online. And this is kind of how it's working. So um, you generate the mobile app. You're then pushing the mobile app to Amazon S3 or another cloud service that allows you to download via HTTPS. For example, um, because we are expecting quite some traffic for um, the application, um, which is still a little secret, um, you um, could use, for example, the Amazon CloudFront service. Um, which would then allow you to kind of have it really fast everywhere in the world. But here we have this Amazon S3, and the um, iPhone can download from it, and that's like working like an awesome synchronization. So there's an MD5 checksum, and only the changed files are really transferred, so you don't have problems with like big downloads after you've initially synced. So, and how it's working is the app is when the app is registering for the push notifications, it's also doing a very little ping to the S3 and checking, is there a new version available? And if yes, then it says, okay, um, let's prompt the user and download it. So periodically we check um, if there's a new version. And the best event to do this is to check when the device gets ready. PhoneGap has a device on, uh, an event on device ready. And when you're using that, that's mostly the best because when the user starts up the app or resumes your app, you'll be able to kind of check if there's an update available. Obviously, only if you have network. So, and, and another event then, obviously, is when the network gets available. So, let's say the user is on a train, has have no network, but then he gets into a region where he has network again. App can see, oh, there's an update available, and prompt the user. So, and then it's downloaded to um, the iPhone again. And initially, once you need to um, do this um, with the JavaScript app, and um, so you once export it to a zip, 
do it like normal, like in Denver, and then you can synchronize again and again and again as often as you want. And um, this is now it's working with push notifications, very easy. You're just sending a push notification to the iPhone. The JavaScript app is prompting the user. Again, the user can download. This is really like, well, we pushed an update. There's a party in three weeks. Um, come check it out. So I'm just adding new slides, right? And then run this module, yeah? And then it automatically will send to the Amazon S3 because um, it has a, like a S3, uh, this, the S3 schema. And um, also, a push notification is sent in automatically to the mobile device. Yeah, and it's kind of very easy to make updates. Huh. But what you really need to be, um, oh, yes, okay. So let's summarize what we need to do so the Drupal website can uh, go to the App Store. Uh, first of all, you need to create your application theme and use such kind of um, scripts and plugins such as iScrawl, Roundabout, Simple Dialog, and a Scroll2 plugin to make site behave like a native iOS Android application. And you also need to install and configure mobile app generator module. And you want to do this. So, and um, then we got this Mac Extras. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to publish it before DrupalCon. There were some bugs in the code that need to be fixed before we are able to publish it. But please check out our blog on Trelloncom blog. We are also on Drupal Planet. So you'll surely get noticed. can also subscribe via RSS. And we will um, uh, give you this application. And the Mac Extras will make it very easy to add the synchronization support. There's um, just one little JavaScript needed. Next slide, please. Thanks a lot. Um, but before we get to that, um, as I already said, you once exported via public, for example, Mac, take this, put it into PhoneGap, and then afterwards you just push to S3 updates. S3, in this case, is relying on the AVS Amazon module and on the S3 um, file backend module. But if you have a crazy service or you need it for Akamai or something and you have a Drupal connector, so everywhere where Drupal can send its files, where Drupal can write files to, you can use it with a mobile app generator. Um, so then you compile your code into a native application using PhoneGap. And if you're using the synchronization support, there's a little change from Denver here. You're putting your app into the WW static directory. Um, and the loader of the Mac extras to the WWW directory. The reason is if you have the loader and um, there's a problem with the files, for example, a download is corrupted. You don't want your app to break. You just want to download it again with the last stable version that was okay. And so there's this loader that's just checking that everything is still fine from the downloads. Safety measures. Yeah. Um, so then you're updating your content. Obviously, you have lots to say. And you push uh, your new updates via Mac. And, but just one caveat. You can update JavaScript via that, because it's included in your app, obviously. But if you push bad JavaScript, you can, under certain circumstances, break the downloader and such break the in-app update functionality. So I wouldn't kind of push JavaScript via the content updates service. I would really do a new release on the App Store then. Another nice thing is um, what you could do, you could just you have your app like 20 MB, so it still fits into downloadable via 3G. And then you can push more content when the user is on a Wi-Fi. So you can have a very slick application on the App Store and then just get down more content when needed. Yeah, that's cool. And also you need to, it's better to install smart app banners on your mobile website so your users know that uh, there is a special version of the, uh, you have application on iOS or Android market. And, and now, please, well, I present yeah. you the bill. Yeah. So we had several slides. I think that was 52 dollars, uh, 52 euros. And we had some more, which was like 36 euros. 
bit, and then you had Kaiserschmann, you had Sauerkraut, you had some Rostbart Würste. Um, so that's a total of 153 dots, some sands. So I assume you want to split the bill. Uh, we'll get there with collecting money. So what I want to. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Questions, please. No questions, yeah. Uh, please enter the microphone. Uh, when when the, the application is uh, generated, is, is it complicated to get it on the Apple Store? No. Um, PhoneGap or Cordova applications are perfectly accepted. Um, and really, PhoneGap build, if you want to sell for it, instead of kind of downloading all the SDK, etc., is um, just giving you the final IPA file which you can submit to the App Store right away. Yeah, PhoneGap uh, website allows to generate automatically several versions of the application for iOS, Android, if, and Bada, uh, Symbian, if Windows 7, if you are using their cloud service. More questions? Demo, demo. Okay. Wow. So there's no questions, we use the time for a little more demoing. Yeah, so let's refresh it. So this is kind of a little pop-up that's starting up at the beginning. Yeah. We invite you, we'll probably also just publish it so it's online later oh. with a blog post. And then you can click, you can drag, just drag a little. Yeah. Your then we have your, your orders here. You have little boxes where you can upload, download content. The scroll bars everywhere. The menu at the bottom. Yeah, menu. Oh. Where is the menu? <laughs> okay, there's still bugs. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, here is menu. I mean, that's, that can happen. Um, obviously, you don't get these markings when you're actually on an iPad here. And the menu. Doesn't like us today, so we'll probably do it without. Don't download it again. Just show a little more of the dragging. The carousel is very nice. You can yeah. drag it with, with the hand, or in this case with the mouse. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's actually working okay if you are doing it with a touch screen. Yeah. So. Um, we really have some more time. Yeah. I can't believe there are no more questions. You can ask everything about mobile. It doesn't even need to be totally to the session. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. It is not yet available. That's why we are showing you the Bavarian restaurant <laughs> instead. <laughs> Um, because we were thinking like, oh, it's not yet out. It would be a very difficult thing to show the branding. Um, it's currently in the submission process. Um, so um, we were sitting in the restaurant there at the Paulana and we were just thinking, what could we do? And we were eating like Bavarian food and suddenly we got, well, we'll do a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Okay, so the question was, um, if you're setting up um, your, mobile app to, um, your mobile app, and this mobile app should have commerce integration, that means that you can uh, publish things, um, can purchase things, and um, you need to take care of all that security. So what in this case I would do, I would kind of do a link between the application that's running here on the phone and your website, mm -hmm. because for all of this processing, they usually need to be online anyway. So um, what you can do is um, I would just forward them to your website and do the purchase there. I mean, you could obviously do all of that kind of in-app. Then you could either use some native commerce things because with PhoneGap, it's very easy kind of to access native functionality. I've written two or three plugins, which we'll also publish with that, that are kind of allowing little things and nice functionality here. 
for example, um, we've not shown that, but uh, the PDFs for the menu, we don't have any PDFs here now, um, are allowing um, to have a little child browser which is coming up, which is like a very nice ebook reader. Um, and there's little such thing, but I guess when the app is out, we'll talk mo a little more about it in the blog post then. Yeah, so I, I think you also uh, uh, need to, you can use it, uh, you can make it different ways, maybe with a services module uh, or backbone JS. And uh, what you also can do is just uh, like embed some um, real HTML from your website to be shown on the um, mobile app, but it should be do secure, so use some tokens and some uh, authorization, some kind of stuff like this. Yeah. Further questions, please. <laughs> there. Um, ca can you have also input forms, um, in, in, not log in, but uh, for example, that you go to uh, uh, page one, page three, uh, with uh, the iPhone uh, iOS uh, formatter? I did get the question. Could you please repeat? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you have to select or, uh, in HTML5 to select content. Is it possible as well? Um, yes, it should be possible. Um, I do think that Cordova has clipboard support. At least the WebKit has, so you have the usual JavaScript functionality available. So um, yes, WebKit ha has support for the clipboard. As you have access to the JavaScript, you can program it. But um, mobile app generator or something won't get you at something like that. You would custom code that. And are the plans for all the or the jQuery uh, tools you mentioned to to create a a, a, a beautiful module for that? Or um, we are thinking about it. Um, I still have to supply the patch for the roundabout because roundabout before was not working really good because kind of the text was resizing with the normal JavaScript, and when we just changed this to jQuery Translate. It was like this smooth that it's really um, it's really hardware accelerated um, resized and that worked much better. So um, I don't think we have so many plans yet, but um, Vadim is a big Drupal contributor, has also working on core, etc. So he, he's probably one to to fulfill your wish at some time in the future. Oh, thank you. So if you have any ideas, any budgets, you can submit. We will commit. And you will get in the list of the one of the commuters for the Mag module. So you're welcome. Yeah, but I'm, I think you're right. It would probably make sense just to just to put those libraries that are not yet having Drupal projects just into little wrappers that are allowing this functionality to be used a little more easier than having to work with all of that. Further questions, please. There was one. Yeah, uh, there was a device detection module that uh, uh, WURFL. So is that needed uh, in this scenario? No. Uh, the device detection module was really only needed for your normal mobile website, I mean, for people not using your app. Yeah. And that's kind of the beauty of it. You could, for example, have a normal website with a responsive theme or a, an extra mobile theme. and. Um, then you have certain pages that you want to export to your mobile app that you want to have always available. And you want other pages that should link the user to the website experience. So you can mix it all up and then you just have to select the right pages to export. And those pages that are not exported will directly link, to, link the user back to your completely mobile um, website. And um, that way you, you can very easily connect the best of the mobile world is the best of what you are doing currently uh, kind of with, with your mobile website anyway. Okay, thanks. Sure. Hi, are there any options for mobile caching? So for instance, you have a news website um, which need an internet connection to fetch news items, mm -hmm. but that you can read it in the subway or whatever. Is it possible? Well, I mean, with Mac now, um, you could just, um, extend it a little. I mean, we can also export files. Really, every file you want to have exported, you only need to do file safe path on it. As soon as you do this, sometime 
somewhere in the page generation code, um, what will happen is, is that it's very easily possible uh, to export any content. So what I would do in that case is I would take services. <laughs> I would statically take the JSON from the services and I would save this with a mobile app generator. And then I would load this JSON. So if you've got an update to push in your news items, you would just push this JSON file and your application would load the new JSON things without having to be online. And you get automatic uh, caching through this content publication service. Okay, thank you. We can take Any more questions. questions more? Hmm. Yeah. I think a um, positive application uh, should be designed by good designers. So say ha they have a, a special design guidelines how to do it, and um, it really uh, need to be looking like IS application. So um, the process of the submitting is very long. Fabian could uh, tell you a bit more about it. Yeah. So if you want to um, um, publish to the um App Store, especially Apple, has some guidelines to follow. That's true. Um, Android and other uh, platforms are usually a bit more light on that. So probably it's the most difficult to get into App Store. But according to the amount of uh, Cordova apps that are on the App Store, many of them having in-app in -app update functionality, um, I'm not assuming any problems there. So the question was, um, how hard is the application process for App Store and what guidelines need to be followed? Further questions, please. Hmm? Anyone? Yeah. Yep. So the question was, if there's a better user experience to switch theme or to have responsive design? The answer is, as always, it depends. <laughs> um, a responsive design can work very well if you are kind of not willing to change your content, but you're just kind of, so your copy remains the same, but you want to um, still give the user a different experience and you want to hide some blocks that are really not necessary on the mobile experience, you also want to lighten the load a lot uh, in that. Um, obviously, the user will still download this blocks because it's just responsive and you're just hiding or reordering, etc. cetera. Um, on the other hand, um, if you're creating a true mobile theme, you can obviously optimize it very much. So what most people end up doing is if they're doing a true mobile theme is that they are also using custom copy for that. So um, with this custom copy, um, you will have not only um, the user experience from the design tailored to the user of a mobile device, but also the content copy. And that's kind of what I would say in that respect. Last question. Your chance to get an answer from me. Or from me. Time is running. <laughs> 30 seconds. Okay, we, we actually have another slide. We need to show it. This top secret slide. Yeah, you, you'll never guess. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Take the survey. <laughs> <laughs> Rate the session. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming very much. <laughs>